Okay, Mark, uh, a lot of questions on the Facebook, so we take a part two with you, okay? Absolutely. Great. Ole is asking, uh, how is it to be a coach when half of the team often are gone in, in the next season? Yeah, you know, uh, you know what happens, uh, the Danish guys are maybe looking for a new challenge or a, uh, maybe quit for a job or to go to school or those types of things that happen. The import guys, uh, maybe in our case, a lot have, have moved on to, to bigger leagues. Um, and at the end of the day, in, in a lot of ways, those are good things, um, you know, because you're able to to show the North American players or import players that guys are moving on to other leagues and, and, and you used in Denmark as a stepping stone. You know, the flip side is it's it's a lot of work to, to, to find those players uh, to replace the guys that have gone. Um, very time consuming and, and a lot of phone calls and emails to go through and, and you know, the next year when you start, it's it's a pretty new team. You don't have all those same lines or players and there's different personalities and they play different ways. So it takes a while for everything to kind of come together and gel. So probably just that time consuming part. Yeah. Finn is asking, uh, why is the team so inconsistent from game to game? Well, I sometimes you you, you ask that self you know yourself that same question, and, and for me, it's been a little bit too inconsistent, um, you know, and, and also in the inconsistency, it's different reasons at times. Uh, um, whether it was uh, the power play or penalty kill or some players not playing up to potential or not scoring on our chances or giving up weak goals and you know but it's a process um, we've gone through it uh, every season since I've been here um, it typically has gotten better um, through the years and and you know lately um, just like everybody and it's not an excuse it's a bit of reality we've had quite a few injuries and and it's hard to fight through that we also played some good hockey when we had some guys out of the lineup too so it's a lot of different things that come into it and and it's me and tor's job to you know guide the players and to help them with uh, getting more consistent and finding solutions and and uh, it's all part of the process like i said it's a game to game uh, mentality that we have here and at the end of the day it's the learning process that we go through and as long as we learn something from our inconsistencies if you will it's part of it um, and with the learning from it we should get better yeah Jimmy is asking um, how will import players from the Eastern Europe fits in on, on this team well my philosophy on, on import players uh, um, I like to do a lot of whatever you want to call it, like a background check. I want to talk to as many people as I can, an ex-coach, an ex-player that maybe I know, um, player, or, you know, different people that have maybe seen the player play, maybe don't know him personally. I want to talk to the player directly. And that's hard for me to do in Eastern Europe. I don't really have any connections out there to, to know a lot of coaches or players that have maybe played with a player. And that's why... And really the only reason why we haven't maybe gone that avenue is I feel it's so important for me to get a feeling um, about the player because we want to have that strong family unit in our dressing room and that's hard to just do and trust this with an agent saying, hey, this is a good player and he's a good guy. I like to find out more and that's, that's the reason we've t stayed away a little bit is, is just to find out more information and it's a little bit difficult to do. Thomas is asking about um, how is the relationship and communication between the, the coach colleagues in this league? Seaman, Pierre mm -hmm. Johansson, Simeone? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm a pretty easygoing guy overall. If we win or lose, yeah, I'm a little bit uh, uh, mad or for win. I'm obviously happy. I think there's a few coaches that are a little more emotional um, to chat after a game, uh, win or lose. A um, few coaches that we talked to a little bit, and some other guys. It's just a hello and a wave, wave on the way by. But uh, talked to Dan Seaman after the last game down there, and uh, um, the guys in Harlev tours from there, so he knows Philip, and and I actually know JP from uh, from Japan from before, so we have a little relationship there. Um, 
yeah, Perry, Johansson, and, and Runestead, we've we've crossed paths a little bit and had some talks. Uh, Mario's, you know, Mario's Mario a little bit that uh, he's a pretty emotional guy. So we've had some short chat, chats and, and, you know, there's a lot of respect for all those guys. They've all done good jobs. This league has got great parity and that comes from, I, th <coughs> I think, the better coaching that has been in the league the last couple of years. So. so a little chat, yeah. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Heidi is asking, what is the biggest and funniest experience <coughs> you got with the uh, hockey fans? <laughs> Oh, that's a tough one. Um, Gold here in Esberg, uh Yeah, I mean, we had so many, you know, people after the the championships in the parking lot and and the after party. I mean, it was such a great experience uh, um, to 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 go through that. Uh, you know, with the fans when you win, it's it's just a, um, a great feeling to to go through that with the, you know, the people that are. There at three, four o'clock in the morning when you come back from Herning, those are your true fans and the ones that are you know the happiest. So it's a great experience to go through that with them. And last year we were fortunate to win at home, and you know it was again such a great time to to experience that. And and both years and still you know my favorite picture of, of winning the championship downtown in the square. You know with the people in the background, that was just a, that was such a neat thing.